Welcome to the Biotech Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on the perspectives surrounding cultured meat biotechnology. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos. Let's continue with our topic. The global population, currently around 7 billion today, is expected to surpass 10 billion by the year 2050. More food will be needed to fulfill the demand of the growing population, which is a great challenge due to resource and arable land limitations. Animal farming must produce larger quantities to supply meat and proteins for the food needs, though the alternative proteins, including insect proteins and plant-based protein derivatives, are being explored. Hence, even if meat consumption is decreasing in developed countries, its global consumption is increasing because consumers are generally unwilling to reduce their meat consumption. To satisfy the increasing demand for food by the growing human population, cultured meat, also called in vitro, artificial, or lab-grown meat, is presented by its advocates as a good alternative for consumers who want to be more responsible but do not wish to change their diet. The Current Challenge Given the current restraints, livestock systems will contribute to addressing the issue of global food and nutrition security in the world. Animal farming must produce larger quantities of high-quality and affordable meat, milk, and eggs through production systems that are environmentally sound, socially responsible, and economically viable. Despite the wide range of economic, environmental, cultural and social services at local, regional, and global levels provided by livestock farming, a significant proportion of livestock is raised nowadays within the factory farming model. The Parallel Solution – Plant-Based Meat For the past few years, the plant-based lifestyle has become one of the trendiest, healthiest, and most eco-conscious ways to live. This is due, in part, to the many innovations in plant-based meat alternatives that allegedly taste and behave just like the real thing. But the recent popularity of burgers by companies like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods has led many curious fan sitters to try them. The Rise of Veganism Veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of, and cruelty to, animals for food. People choose to be vegan for health, environmental, and or ethical reasons. For example, some vegans feel that one promotes the meat industry by consuming eggs and dairy products. Many vegans choose this lifestyle to promote a more humane and caring world. They know they are not perfect, but believe they have a responsibility to try to do their best while not being judgmental of others. What is plant-based meat made out of? The plant-based meats are most commonly made from soy, peas, beans, mushrooms, mung beans, or wheat gluten, otherwise known as seton. The most advanced plant-based meats are often a mix of some of those proteins, and many include natural pigments to make the meat look red and brown. Plant oils are often added to make the meat juicy, add flavor, or give the appearance of marbled fat. Vegan binding agents are added to the mix as are an assortment of nuts, seeds, or veggies. Yeast can be added to create a meatier, more distinctively umami flavor. Many plant-based types of meat also include added vitamins like B12, iron, and zinc, which are all commonly found in animal sources. Beyond Burgers also contain minerals like calcium, iron, salt, and potassium chloride, as well as beet juice extract, apple extract, and other natural flavors. The result ends up being a product that looks, feels, and often tastes like real meat, only without any added suffering. These new innovations are so delicious that they might eventually be the key to widespread veganism, which will help ultimately help the climate and our conscience. A new approach Among the solutions, cultured meat is presented by its advocates as a sustainable alternative for consumers who want to be more responsible but do not wish to change the composition of their diet. The objective of this process is to recreate the complex structure of livestock muscles with a few cells. A biopsy is taken from a live animal. This piece of muscle will be cut to liberate the stem cells, which have the ability to proliferate, but can also transform themselves into different types of cells, such as muscle cells and fat cells. Unlike conventional meat, cultured muscle cells may be safer, without any adjacent digestive organs. On the other hand, with this high level of cell multiplication, some dysregulation is likely as happens in cancer cells. Likewise, the control of its nutritional composition is still unclear, especially for micronutrients and iron. 
Regarding environmental issues, the potential advantages of cultured meat for greenhouse gas emissions are a matter of controversy, although less land will be used compared to livestock, ruminants in particular. However, more criteria need to be taken into account for a comparison with current meat production. How does cell cultivation work? The cells will start to divide after they are cultured in an appropriate culture medium which will provide nutrients, hormones and growth factors. The best medium is known to contain fetal bovine serum, FBS, a serum made from the blood of a date calf which is going to be rate limiting and not acceptable for vegetarians nor vegans. More than 1 trillion cells can be grown and these cells naturally merge to form myotopes which are no longer than 0.3 mm. The myotopes are then placed in a ring growing into a small piece of muscle tissue as described in different reviews. This piece of muscle can multiply up to more than a trillion strands. These fibers are attached to a sponge-like scaffold that floods the fibers with nutrients and mechanically stretches them, exercising the muscle cells to increase their size and protein content. Based on this process, fewer animals will be necessary to produce huge amounts of meat due to cell proliferation, thereby avoiding killing as too many animals but potentially lots of calves if FBS is still used. Throughout this process, the cells are kept in a monitored environment that replicates the temperature inside the body of a cow, for example, to speed up the development of the lab-grown meat. It is still not perfect. Finally, we are still far away from real muscle, which is made up of organized fibers, blood vessels, nerves, connective tissue and fat cells. This is why the different startups working in this area have developed different strategies, some of them work with stem cells or muscle cells to reproduce unorganized muscle fibers, which is the simplest approach, while others are trying to reproduce thin slices of muscles, i.e., muscle fibers and other cell types quite well imbricated together. Nevertheless, the production of a thick piece of meat, like a real steak, is still a dream, due to the necessity of perfusing oxygen inside the meat to mimic the diffusion of oxygen as it occurs in real tissue. Henceforth, many complex processes still need to be controlled to make in vitro meat more attractive to consumers as it is more or less the case for any other new food product. Indeed, in terms of technical issues, research is still required to optimize cell culture methodology. It is also almost impossible to reproduce the diversity of meats derived from various species, breeds and cuts. Although these are not yet known, we speculated on the potential health benefits and drawbacks of cultured meat. As with any food product, consumers will not be willing to accept any compromises in terms of food safety or indeed to compromise much on taste or other attributes. Indeed, consumers are still highly influenced by the sensory quality of meat. Thus, plant-based meat alternatives have been developing and have improved a lot in terms of sensory traits in recent years because a lot of progress has been made in mimicking real meat. Therefore, with high sensory slash organoleptic quality, these meat substitutes should not be considered as an intermediate step leading to the acceptance and greater consumption of artificial meat. Indeed, sales of meat, analogs made from plant-based proteins and mycoproteins may increase more than cultured meat. In the near future, these meat substitutes are holding an important market share especially in light of the fact that $16 billion was invested in startups and companies offering vegetable meat substitutes which is much more than investments in startups working on cultured meat. Therefore, some scientists consider that cultured meat is already obsolete, since progress in plant-based meat alternatives is already well advanced. Closing Perspectives Despite its current high price, the production costs of cultured meat will probably decrease in the near future. This may help consumer acceptance, despite a strong rejection of names that refer to in vitro or cultured meat technology. However, Cultured meat will be in competition with other meat substitutes already on the market and better accepted by consumers, such as plant-based products. Ethically, cultured meat aims to use considerably fewer animals than conventional livestock, which makes the product attractive to vegetarians and vegans. However, a few animals will still need to be reared so that their cells can be harvested to produce in vitro meat.